So the best plug-in hybrids for 2024 and 2025. This comes to us from Road and Track. That they're finding that the plug-in hybrids, if they're in that mode uh, where they're just doing the electric, are actually slower. Hi, I'm David with EV World News. I'm in studio today with our founder and chief editor, Bill Moore. How's it going today, Bill? Oh, good morning, good morning, good morning. All right, so our topic is kind of our our big one, and that's uh, the best plug-in hybrids for 2024 and 2025. This comes to us from Road and Track. And I actually, I posted the I posted the link, but I actually didn't read the article. So you'll have to fill me. Yeah, it's not bad. We're just kind of going to go through some of these. I mean, the, the obvious one, the Toyota Prius Prime. Prius, yeah. Base price of $34,000. It's a plug-in hybrid. And what does it get? It gets 45 miles as an EV. So you plug it in, you get 45 miles of electric power before you need gas. Which was about double what the original plug-in hybrids when they introduced the Prime a generation or two ago. So that's that's excellent. The current one is 220 horsepower. Now, when it's driving on the electric, I'm sure it's even faster than that, okay? Because Prius does take off. Yeah, interestingly enough, an article that uh, came up, I think it was yesterday, that they're finding that the plug-in hybrids, if they're in that mode uh, where they're just doing the electric, are actually slower than if they're just using, you know, the, the straight gasoline engine combination. So, yeah. All right. Well, let me see what else we got here. We got a, the Kia Nero plug-in hybrid, about 35,000. It's uh, got about 180 horsepower. doesn't give much in the way of stats otherwise. Um, 2024 Toyota RAV4 Prime. Now, Toyota had not done a whole lot of plug-in hybrids in the past. Last year, they did have, I think they had the RAV4 and they had the um, Highlander. They have a Highlander Prime now. Okay. Okay. So they don't have a lot of plug-in hybrids, but they do have a few. This is, you know, this used to be a a small SUV. Yeah. I remember it well. But still $45,000. A lot of these uh, Japanese small SUVs keep getting bigger. Like the Honda CRV used to be this tiny little hatchback car. And now it's actually almost the same size as a Ford Explorer. I mean, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, and so we, we keep getting SUV bloat. Now, this one I found kind of fascinating when I was reading this article. The Kia Sorento plug-in hybrids at 49000 Now, it's not as stylish as the Hyundai Santa Fe, but Hyundai no longer offers the Santa Fe as a plug-in hybrid. Well, you're keeping it closer to tabs on it than I do, so... Yeah, I, I was really kind of surprised that they decided to drop that. But that's a 260-horsepower SUV. And then we've got a Mazda CX-70 and CX-90. Now, they start getting kind of pricey. It has a 26-mile charge, 323 horsepower. Now, we started getting this. This is the BMW 550e. This one's $74,000. We're starting to get up there in the price. Out of my league. It has an inline six gas engine. I'm betting it probably has a a range of about 20 miles, if even that, probably like 16. And some of these cars that are like this are, you know, you may have that electric range, but they're really more about adding to the acceleration of the car with the electric motor than they are about, you know, energy concentration. Because the very last one of this is definitely going to be in that category of just making the car faster. So here's a a Volvo XC90 T8, which is a very large Volvo three-row SUV for $73,000. It cranks out 455 horsepower, uh, has 33 miles of EV range on a full charge. Then here's another BMW, an X5 plug-in hybrid. Oh, it gets 40 miles on a charge. So at 40 miles, you're pretty much only driving electric. Yeah, for the most part, until you go on a trip. Uh, That's kind of nice to see. I didn't know the Range Rover finally kind of started doing something here. Oh, that's new. I hadn't realized that. $121,000 gives you 51 miles of electric range. 540 horsepower SUV. That's that's a powerful SUV. Uh, That's nice to see that this is, uh, you know, the first thing we've seen from Range Rover. Now, Porsche makes electric cars. Here they're taking the Panamera, which is a very nice looking sedan, giving it a a plug-in hybrid version for $117,000. Porsche took the Macon SUV and they made it an EV, but it's about $85,000 for that 771 horsepower Turbo SE hybrid, 202 mile per hour top speed. 
Oh, that's all. That's Autobahn cruising speed. Yes, it is Autobahn cruising speed. The standard version only has 463 horsepower, but you can get a version all the way up to 771. Now, here's the big Mercedes S580 E sedan, and this has 56 miles of electric driving range. The last one, you know, for those of us who uh, have an extra $342,000 sitting around, <laughs> the Ferrari 296 doesn't say what its range is. Has 819 horsepower and doesn't tell us what kind of hybrid range it has. I know I was at a place out in Arizona a few years ago and they had a plug-in electric Ferrari in there. I actually saw it, you know, being charged and I just like an electric Ferrari. And uh, I had to go doing a little looking, but it was a lot more expensive than this. It wasn't this $340,000 price tag. It was like nine fifty. Limit Limited edition. Yeah, we didn't give a whole lot of stats there on a lot of these uh, plug-in hybrids. But, the, you know, in the United States, the plug-in hybrid selection still isn't that great. You think about BYD as the world leader and making plug-in hybrid cars. They sell more than anybody else. Hi, I'm David with EV World News. If you like this video, then please press the like button. If you like the content and would like to see more videos on electric vehicles, then please hit the subscribe button. If you have some feedback for us, please let us know in the comments. Have a great day.